I encourage you to take some time to go through some of the behaviors and try to understand how the different components are affecting the way that entity is acting. So let's take a look at a few first to get you started. So let's take a look at the chicken. So if you look at the chicken, there's a couple of interesting things there when you look through the behaviors. One of them is that the chicken will take no fall damage, right? Because the chicken falls nice and slow by fluttering down. So it takes no fall damage. If you want to take no fall damage, or if you want another entity to take no fall damage, you would use that property. You can see also that chicken's rideable, but it's only rideable by zombies. So you can, can, you can change what's able to ride the chicken right there. And then also how it's breedable and tameable, things like that. Another thing with the cow is that the cow can be, has an, has an interact feature. So if you interact with a, if the player uses a bucket that's empty, that's what the zero is for, it's an empty bucket. So if a player uses an empty bucket on a cow, then it'll transform that item into a bucket of ID one, which is a bucket with milk in it, and it'll play the milk sound. So that's how you're getting milk from cows using that feature. So if you wanted to change that, like to get, maybe you want to get glass when you, when you put a bucket under a cow, you can decide to do that. I, it doesn't make any sense. I don't know. I didn't come up. Well, I, I guess I did come up with the idea. But that's the great thing. With add-ons, you come up with your own ideas. You make it happen. It doesn't have to make sense. It could just be fun or it could add to, uh, to the new gameplay that you're creating in your custom add-on. And of course, let's take a look at the creeper. What does the creeper do? I know everybody loves what the creeper does, except when it, you have all your stuff in survival mode and it blows you up and kills you down in a cave. That's no fun, but creepers explode. So you could see here that we've got a component group called exploding, which uses the explode component with a fuse length and uh, a power number and whether or not that explosion causes fire. So that's an interesting thing. I'm sure you'll have a lot of fun with that. Another cool thing about a creeper is that when it gets struck by lightning, it becomes a charged creeper. So here is a damage sensor that's detecting damage from lightning and calling the event become charged and telling it that the lightning does not cause any damage. So instead of getting killed by the lightning, it'll get converted to a charged creeper. And that's how that happens. You can see here there's an interact function here. If you interact, it looks like if you have flint and steel and you're the player and you interact with the creeper, bad things are going to happen. So let's have a look at the Enderman. He's a favorite guy. He does some interesting behavior. So you can see when he's acquired a target, he becomes angry, right? So you don't want to make him angry. That's not good because then he starts attacking you and that's no fun. And so you can see here he's got a uh, teleport attribute to him that's got a randomness to it so it looks like he's got some random distances that he'll t and random times that he'll, he'll teleport and then it looks like there's a look at that if the player is wearing a pumpkin that's what you can wear a pumpkin on your head to avoid uh, the the enderman from seeing that you're looking at him so that doesn't make him angry and a couple of other things here is that he's got some interesting behavior where he takes a block and then there's also hurt when wet. That's a good one. That's going to be very similar to like the blaze. The blaze has that capability as well, where blaze takes no fall damage. And a blaze will get hurt when it's wet, but it's also fire immune. So these are all different uh, fun attributes that you could use. Then you have like a, a guardian, right? Guardians live in water. So that's kind of cool. We can probably have instead of instead of breathable, they're going to say that they breathe water and that's true so that it won't take any damage while it's underwater. Let's have a look at the ghast. One of the cool things about the ghast is that it shoots fireballs. So you can see here that's defined as a shooter that shoots large fireballs. Another thing with a ghast is that it will only attack you if it can see you. So you can hide behind a wall and then it won't know you're there. So you could see here the must see being true when it comes to nearest attackable target is what's affecting that behavior. So if you want the gas to be able to find you even if it can't see you, then you can change that to false. Another cool thing would be like the ender pearl. Ender pearl is cool because you could see that it's a projectile and on hit it's going to teleport the owner 
and then there's a chance that it will spawn an endermite. And then it removes the pearl once it hits. So that's how the projectile is being used. And then you also have attributes like the power that it's thrown, how gravity is affecting it, its angle offset, inertia, things like that. So there's a lot of cool attributes you can mess around with there. And of course, one of your favorites is going to be TNT. You can see here, TNT will explode and will not cause fire. The power of the explosion is four. And it's also got the ability to set off other explosions. So you can see here this event from explosion triggers other TNTs to explode. So if it's being affected by an explosion, then it will start to explode. That's where those chain reactions explosions come from. So lots of cool stuff here. You can go through this, take a look at it, have some fun with uh, exploring and learning new ideas, getting some ideas, and also take a look at the, the add-on reference guide that we have as well, which is going to give you all the different possibilities and also give you examples on how they work and how to implement them. But for now, let's just take that inspiration and keep moving forward so we can get our first add-on created.